Now we come to the silent period. Then I went to work on commercially, <laughs> got out of the Navy, got married, had children, one, two, three here. The first company that offered me a job in 46 after I got out of the Navy was Westinghouse Electric, who unfortunately is pretty well out of the picture these days. Westinghouse, after all this electronic work and so on, put me to work with nothing more basic than railways. So I had to go back to DC motors, DC generators, <laughs> learn a lot about railway operations, like electrical stuff. So I stayed with them for about six, seven years. I ended up with uh, having one customer. I mean, I was a sole representative between Westinghouse Electric Company and the Baldwin Locomotive Works. And that, that was 100% of my time, was to keep Baldwin and Westinghouse talking to each other. And that was the telephone pole between them. And uh, the two chairmen of the boards of each company got together someplace over a drink and decided not to do business with each other. So I sent out resumes and before long another small company got a hold of me in, in the railway field in New Haven, Connecticut. Yeah, we moved here in 1960 and I was representing a Chicago outfit making a special device for freight cars. And um, they decided to close the Washington office and move to Chicago, move our office to Chicago. Well, at that time, my mother was living in town with another family. My father had just died. Anne's mother was, in a, was living in a house at the corner as you drove in. And to pick up this family, three kids, and two mothers to move them to Chicago, it's, it's impossible. <clears throat> so I very nicely told the owners of the company, he says, I'd love to hang in there with you on this international business. And I traveled all over the world for them, yeah. actually around the world once, and uh, three trips to South Africa, more trips, umpteen trips to Europe. So. Now, as they made use of my languages and my willingness to travel, in the meantime, uh, one of the vice presidents of a company we had who were considering to license in Germany, he became interested in the automatic coupling in the States and what the equipment that goes behind it. And we were about to license them to make that equipment if they were not here to do it. And I said, well, and then all of a sudden, this thought on me, why don't I represent you in the States? And he said, went back like that, said, see, that's a good idea. So I started with them. I started this company called Knorr Brake Corporation. In the meantime, of course, it took a, I couldn't hold this job in Chicago. So I found a, another company in New Jersey. So I was with them for a couple of years. And then we contracted, we incorporated a German company made, called the Knorr Brake Corporation. That was a very workable contract. And it was good for them and good for me. Well, within two years, we, I had to get more people. Uh, I had one, two guys. The Germans sent a couple over to help me. Basically, we outgrew space in Hackensack. We could see this thing was going. So my family moved back here. We kicked the tenants out. And I started a company in Rockville, Maryland with five people. And I always say that this was the most efficient time of the year of, of the company because there were only five of us in a room smaller than this room in a warehouse and we only had four chairs. So whoever went to the bathroom lost out. <laughs> well, I retired in 88, 
In 88, we outgrew the Rockville facilities. We started with a 600 square foot warehouse. The building adjoining us was also 600. And there was a wall that could be knocked out to so make it 1,200 square feet. And this last month, I went back to Westminster for the de dedication of the new building of 320,000 square feet. <laughs> well, I retired. I, I um, stayed on the board of Knorr for a couple of years. And then when they got established in Westminster, I uh, was removed from the board. Uh, they went on by themselves. The interesting thing of the Germans, the three men I really worked the most with, the owner, the head of engineering, and head of marketing. All three were in World War II. All three were in Russian prison war camps. One was a pilot. Uh, the other two were foot soldiers or engineers or something like that.